Okay, welcome to my first Construct 2 tutorial. Uh, the reason why I'm making this is somebody asked me how to make turn-based movement, and I'm going to make a real simple turn-based movement with range, so it's going to know how far you're going to go. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make a background, and whenever I do that, um, I make another layer. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is add a layer. So I have a layer 0, a layer 1. We're going to start on layer 0. And the easiest way to make a background is with a tiled object. So I'll put this in where you can see it. We're going to make a tiled background object. Um, let's make the background 32 by 32. So I'm going to set the size of this 32 by 32. And so we've got a 32 by 32 square here. And I'm going to go ahead and make it basically gray just a boring gray background and make a black line, a couple of black lines around the um, outside, just around one corner of the outside, that's all you need. And then your um, tiled background will stretch out and just repeat that over and over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that. And since it's a 32 by 32 um, grid, if you want to make your objects be right in the center of the square of the grid, you need the grid to be kind of halfway there. So I'm going to make its position negative 16, comma, negative 16. And what that's going to do is if I go ahead and snap to grid when I put any other objects on here, they're going to be right in the middle of these squares. So um, now that I've got my background all, all set up, uh, I don't want to have to worry about selecting it or touching it again, so I lock it and switch to layer one. So now whatever I put or whatever I select isn't going to affect that background. So even if I had background objects, scenery or whatever, it's locked now and you don't have to worry about it. So you're kind of encapsulating that just by doing that. Um, so the first thing, I'm going to need some characters. Um, and what we're going to do is make a button that says move and that will set you into say, move mode and then you will be able to select a place to move to and then it will move there and that's pretty pretty simple um, but it in, a, in an engine where it kinda is doing everything all at once you wanna tame it you wanna make it so it only does what you want when you want and uh, doesn't do anything else and the way I'm gonna do that is with groups but before I get to that let's add our players uh, first object I'm going to add is a button and it's going to be a move button. I'm going to use a sprite and it's going to be uh, 64 wide by 32 high. So it's going to take up two of those squares and it's going to be a nice green button and we'll give it, uh, we'll make it all buttony by having a highlights on it so it looks buttony, button-esque if you will, button-ish, buttonized, and you probably end up doing something like this in a paint program anyway, but with the sprite editor, there we go, it's a nice nice button, we can even make a, make a sloppy little M here for move, there we go, that's my move button, and there's my move button. So there it is, right there. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do, and if you want, if you want to have the move button really sit on the squares, and uh, if you're if you're OCD like me, you want you want to do that. You'll want to put the um, origin at 16, 16 comma 16, which would be right in the middle of a 32 by 32 thing. And now look, it's right in the, right in a square. So there you go, there's your button, and then you're going to want a player, insert new object, sprite, and I'm going to make this sprite 32 by 32. And the movement isn't going to be grid based, it's not going to be snapping to the grid when you move, but um, just, you know, if you want to put things where, uh, you know, in the middle of a grid, then that's what you're going to want to do. I'm just going to make my player be a triangle so you can see which way he's facing. Kind of the simplest thing you can have that you can know know where it's headed. And uh, 
the origin's already in the middle. Um, one thing about one thing about the point of origin is sometimes um, I accidentally click out here someplace and I don't realize it, and I go in and like, where's my sprite? It's not where it goes. You just just make sure that you put it in the middle. And a fast way to do that is with quick assign, put it right in the middle. Boom, there you go, right in the middle. And you notice wherever I put it, since I've snapped a grid, it's right in the middle of the square. And I'm gonna call this move button or button move BTN. I'm using uh, old school Microsoft uh, naming conventions. So that's what I'm used to from. And then I'm gonna call this um, player. Player. There's the player. Now, the player, if it's going to move by a range, what it's going to need to know is a couple things. So it's going to need to know its target, X, Y, where it wants to go to, and it's going to need to know its range. So I'm going to give it some instance variables. So first thing, it's going to be a range. And I'm going to say the range is 320. So it can all, it can all around go, it can go within a circle that's uh, 320 units big. It also is going to want to know its target X. I'm going to just say TX, make it faster. And we don't need to put anything yet because it doesn't know what its target is yet. And I'm going to say TY. And um, it doesn't know that yet either. Okay, so now it has a range, a target X, and a target Y. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, a lot of times games will have a um, indication of the range. When you, when you get ready to move, it'll show you literally how far you can go. So I'm going to add that. And, um, but the range doesn't have to have any size yet because depending on who's moving, the range could be different. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Um, and I'm just going to make it real small. I'm going to make it 10 by 10. and zoom in on it here and the easiest way to make a 10 by 10 circle is just make a size 10 brush make its hardness 100 and there we go we got a perfect little 10 by 10 circular object so there it is there's my 10 by 10 circular object and i'm gonna move it right to the middle of that thing and just to make sure it stays on there i'm gonna give it a uh, let's call it range and range and I'm going to give it pin, a pin behavior. So I'm going to pin it to the player. So first thing we do is just give it a pin behavior. Okay, so we have all our objects now that we need. Uh, now it's time to start doing events. Now when, when you want to have things happen one thing at a time, um, one really useful thing to do is to have groups. I love groups. Uh, they not only organize your code, but they can be used functionally as well. So I'm going to start out by adding a group. Um, and the group helps you plan out your code before you really start writing it, plan out your events. So I'm going to add a group called Setup. And that's active on start. And that's whatever, uh, whatever you do on start of layout, I usually put in a setup group. So if there's a whole bunch of things you can just... Uh, click the minus on the setup when it gets there and you don't have to look at all your setup events um, And the first thing and really the only thing I need to do in the setup is Add sub event right click on your group and add sub event Is I'm gonna go ahead and pin the range to oh, wait, wait, I have to do this on start of layout. So system on Start of layout there you are on start of layout uh, I'm going to add an action and the range I'm going to go ahead and pin to the player and it only really needs to care about its position you don't need to rotate the circle so um, I'm going to pin it to the player and then we can go ahead and hit the minus we're done we don't need to look at that anymore unless we want to add some more stuff to it but let's go ahead and make all our groups uh, to begin with I'm going to do we're going to see if we hit this button and if we do we're going to show a range and how far you can go and then if you click somewhere within that range he's going to point at it and go towards it so that's that's uh three things selecting action and the reason why i have a, have select action is because you have a move button here but you might have a 
attack button. You might have a uh, use uh, power up button. There might, depending on what it is, there might be a, any number of actions you can take. So we're going to see. First thing we want to do is see which action you take. So I'm going to make it add another group called select action. And that is active during your turn. So if your turn's active and it's your turn, then it's going to be active. So I'm going to put it, drag this inside of your turn. But I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to add all the groups that go into your turn first. So let's add the group. Uh, once you've selected action and you selected move, you want to set your target. So we're going to call this set target. And it's not active on start because you haven't hit the move button yet. Um, it's not going to happen until you hit the move button. So I've made it not active. If you want to go back and, and uh, change something about this, you can hit edit. You can put a description. Groups are great. I love groups. I can't say it enough how much I like groups. Um, so it's not active on start. It's set target. Once you've set your target, then you're going to want to be moving. And so I'm going to add a group called moving. Uh, moving and that's not active either because you haven't decided to move and you haven't set your target yet but when you do you can do this so I'm gonna put all of these into your turn and when you when you want to add a bunch of these add that you got to do them in reverse order uh, you can move them around once they're in there but I like it doesn't matter really to the to the construct that isn't gonna care what order these are in but it is nice to have them in the order that they're going to go so it's easier for you to read it so when it's your turn and then once you're done and you have all your events in there you just go like this here's my code i'm done um so the first thing it's going to do is set the target oh no no first thing is to do is select action see i there here's how you reorder them you cannot move that there what do you mean you can't move that there can i move this down here yes i can okay select action set target once you've selected move and then be moving so let's do let's do select action let's add a sub event to select action select action the first thing i'm going to want to know is have you clicked the move button and that i already forgot to put something in here and guess what it is it's the mouse if you want to use the mouse control you have to put the mouse in your layout so add object mouse and you're done with that so now you can you can now add add uh, mouse controls. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a sub event mouse on object clicked, and let's see if I have clicked the move button. If I have clicked the move button, great. Then I will start setting the target. So in order to make this active, you go into system set group active and I'm going to set group active set target set it activated and the other thing I'm going to do now that the target setting the target is I'm going to show the range so let's make the range start out invisible so you can't see the range to begin with and so that's down here initial initial visibility invisible and when you click move it's going to immediately show you your range so the first thing i'm going to do is set it back to visible so now you'll see your range and your range is already pinned to the player and i'm going to make the range the size of your your player's range so in order to do that you set the height dot range And then we're going to go ahead and set the width player width done okay and now that you have clicked the move button you've got your range um, you've decided to move so you can't be selecting your action anymore you've you've made up your mind and so I'm gonna set this group deactivated so select action I just set group group active deactivated 
So now it's going to go ahead and see if you've clicked the move button, show you your range, start setting the target, and stop selecting action because you're done, you've made up your mind, you can't go back now, you're, you're committed, you have decided to move. And you're done with select action. You never have to look at it again unless you uh, have more actions you can select. Maybe you'll have something where a mouse is clicked on fight or something. But for now, that's it. That's all you need to know about select action. Now, select target is going to be activated because you activated it at the end of... You activated it right here, right at the beginning of uh, set target. So really the kind of order in which it's doing it should be that. You're, you're making the range visible, you're making the range be as big as it should be so that the player can see... Um, oh, I said player width, didn't I? It's a good thing I went over this. It's good, good to go over this. We want to set both the width and height the player dot range. There we go. Alright, so the width and height are the player range. So it's going to be a big circle that's going to be about 320 because that's the player's range that you set up in the instance variable earlier. Okay, now you're done. And uh, set target is going to be active. So what are we gonna do in set target? We're going to set the player's target X. So, first of all, we're gonna see if you've clicked somewhere because you're gonna be clicking where you want your target to go. So let's go ahead and add a sub event and it's going to be the mouse and it's going to click anywhere so so we first thing we want to do is see if the mouse has been clicked the second thing we want to do is see if the mouse um, we want to add another condition we want also want to see if the mouse is over the range if the mouse is over the range, then we know it's within range. There's other ways we could do this. We could try and get the distance between your mouse click and the player and see if it's close enough, but we've already got an object there that we can do collision with and see if the mouse is clicking within range. So if the mouse is clicked, if the mouse is within range, now we can set our target. So let's go ahead and set our target to where the mouse is clicked. So we're going to set the value of target X, TX, to be... mouse X and we're gonna set TY to be mouse Y mouse dot Y there we go sometimes I just set type mouse Y and it doesn't work um, okay so then I'm gonna say set target is deactivated well first of all I'm gonna say moving is activated because now you've set your thing it's within range you're going to set moving activated. So set group activated, moving. That's going to be activated. And we're going to deactivate set target because you're done setting target. So we're going to go ahead and say set target deactivated. Deactivated. So there we go. Now, you see I'm using these not just to organize the code, but using them kind of like they're subroutines or methods right there. You know, they, they, turn, they, they do their thing and then they exit. So now set target is deactivated because you clicked somewhere in range and you're starting to move. So if movement is activated, maybe there's one more thing you should do. You know, I'm not going to do it in here. I'm going to do it in moving because um, it should happen all the time and I think it's better to have it in moving and I'll tell you what it is in just a second. Let's say add sub event. First thing the player is going to do is, well, this is, this is going to happen all the time. So we want to know, it's only going to happen though until he reaches his target, right? So let's go ahead and make a, uh, make a check to see if the player has reached the target or is within a certain distance of the target. So we're going to add a sub event and to do this I am going to go ahead and use distance. I'm going to compare two values. The first value is the distance. And you've got a nice little distance function in construct player dot x comma player y comma player dot tx comma player dot ty and so you see what I'm doing here. I'm just seeing what the distance is from the player to where the player wants to go, player's target. 
And if that distance is greater than, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just say eight arbitrarily. Eight's pretty close. Um, if it gets to its target, it'll stop doing this because it won't be greater than. So only when it's great, only when its distance is greater than it, so it's not there yet, it's gonna do this. So if it's not there yet, then player is going to um, set angle towards his target. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and say Okay, so we're going to set the angle and we're going to go ahead and move towards it. So let's move forward. We'll move forward one. Done. Uh, but we need to stop doing that once we get to it. So I'm going to say else. And basically else means it's not greater than 8. So it must be less than 8. It must be at its or pretty close to its target. So all I need to do here is make it stop moving. Set group active moving. Deactivated. Another thing I want to do though is let you select your action again. So now you're now that you're done moving, you're free to select another action. Uh, or maybe your turn would be over and it's the enemy's turn, but in this case there's nothing else but you, so we're gonna go ahead and say is activated. So select action, activated, moving, deactivated. Um, before you deactivate a group that you're in, you should do everything you're going to do in it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and activate select action, deactivate moving when he's at his target. So there's my code. Set up your turn. And uh, so that's that's pretty, pretty easy. Huh? You've got two things it's doing. But um, that's really nice about groups is it just you never have to look at those things again if you have more turns uh, your code looks nice and neat and, and it doesn't uh, doesn't clutter up everything but here's all it's doing so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and give it a go and see if it works um, here we go so I haven't done anything yet I can't click if I click move oh, I've got a range and look at that, the range is just covering up everything and you can't uh, see very well. But he definitely moves. So there's two things I need to do right now to fix this. Uh, the first thing I want to do is take this range and give it an opacity of something less than 100. Let's give it an opacity of like 35 so you can still see. The other thing I want to do is go ahead and as soon as you have are done setting your target let's go ahead and make this range back to invisible because you've made it you've made it visible let's make it invisible so okay um, and I'll put this up here because you want to do everything you're gonna do before you deactivate the group that you're in um, at least that's what it seems like it should do Okay, so I've made it so the range doesn't cover up everything, and so, you know, it's, it's transparent uh, because I give it an opacity of 35, and I'm setting it invisible. Let's make sure that when we do select move, we, we are making it visible, right? We, we set it visible right here. So, okay, now let's try it again. So move, and there's your range. Nice, nice and neat and you're ready to move again, uh, you click outside your range, you can't do it. So you now have turn-based movement within range. Uh, there's lots of other things you can do. See if you hit a wall. You could use, you could put pathfinding in within the move feature if you wanted to, and uh, you could make it move uh, by blocks. There's lots of different things you can add to this, but this is just a very simple method of doing things in a turn-based kind of way. So that's it. That's it for my uh, turn-based tutorial.